little windy, it's a little cold, but I am so stoked to ride the bike today because the bike I'm going to give a first spin is the Richie Ascent. Richie bikes are no stranger to the channel. I love both versions of the Outback. Second one I almost bought, but I wanted something with a steel fork rather than a carbon fork. And, and the Ascent has a steel fork. We'll see if the ride is just as compliant and supple as the Outback. I have to say one of the things I love about this build is all the purple components. It has all the purple. Purple fill wood hub, purple paw clampers, purple paw brake levers, purple bar end shifty thingy. This is actually a pretty cool touch. Uh, this is a micro shift bar end shifter that is converted to be used with a flat bar. Renee Ertz um, Tandem Ridge. 650B by 55, so some big meats today, as well as the super sweet cranks from White Industries. I believe these are M30 uh, boost spacing. And what's cool about the design is that you can use the same crank as a single and as a double chain ring. Dior rear derailleur and a Sun Race cassette, and these Coyote bars in silver. I've been really digging these bars on the cutthroat, so cool to see them on this build. And what's unique about them is the sweet back but before they do, they sweep forward. If these bars just swept back, you'd have to compensate by putting a really long stem. But with this forward sweep, you get that swept back without having to run like a 120 mil stem. If I do have one complaint about these bars is that I wish this flat section was a little bit uh, longer just so it's easier to mount to bag and so that these bends wouldn't run into the top of most bags. Someone's doing some yard work, it's getting loud. Let's get riding. really windy today but you know what we're gonna make it happen because I'm really excited to ride this bike when this bike came out I think there was a lot of confusion as to what it was exactly you know is it a gravel bike is it a mountain bike it could do some of those tasks but if you look at the geo numbers it's not quite either of them probably the most unique feature of this bike is it's got pretty long chain stays by modern standards I think the rear is 463 not as long as you would get from say a Ribbendale, but definitely a lot longer than a lot of the modern gravel bikes out there. Let's see how these long chain stays do on a short, very steep section. Oh. Oh. Didn't break traction, not lifting up. So far so good. Definitely a smooth and stable descender on a uh, pavement. So like I was saying, one of the defining features is the longer chainstay. Uh, I believe it's 463. By modern standards, that's pretty long. Most gravel bikes are either 425 if they're racy or 430, sometimes they'll go crazy 440. This really pushes it at 463. The rear end is definitely touring bike territory. I believe the old Surly long haul trucker was in the 460s. Now they dropped it down to 450 something. Lots of Rivendells in this range, but also longer. The front, I forget the exact head tube angle and rake, but the calculated trail is in the 70s, low 70s, mid 70s. So on the higher side for a gravel bike, and in plain English, that means it's gonna be more stable. Might introduce some wheel flop, although in my very short time riding this, it's not as wheel floppy as other bikes I have ridden. I think part of that is the riding position, less weight on the front, as well as the big leverage on the handlebar. So what is it? I know some people are typing 90s mountain bike. Richie describes it as a touring bike with a mountain bike position, especially with uh, flat bars or sweat back bars. And I think that's pretty accurate. In, in some ways, very close to something like the long haul trucker but without the bulk the, the trucker was really built up so when you had a heavy load it wouldn't laterally flex i think this is a little bit more playful not as heavy on our scales the bike weighed in at just a little bit over 25 pounds when i had my long haul trucker i think it was 28 or 30 pounds i think this is where this bike is interesting because it has that traditional touring bike geometry but without being so overbuilt as a traditional touring bike and it's that combination of opposing traits 
that I think really makes this bike unique. Steel fork, so you don't have to be afraid about putting a rack or a basket on this one, unlike the Outback. But enough talking, let's do a little bit more riding. So I handled that chonky bit really well. Didn't get pushed around like a lower trail bike. I feel let a little air out in the tire. I just set this up tubeless, bouncing around a little bit. Okay, the trail back there wasn't too muddy. So that gives me some confidence that this little bit of single track I'm gonna ride on should be okay to ride on. Okay, so top of the climb to the trail and sort of like I expected it does climb like a longer chain stay bike so smooth and deliberate it doesn't have that choppy staccato jumpiness of a shorter stay bike so if you like a smooth climbing bike this bike is for you in terms of the front end it didn't have a lot of wheel flop for me even even with a jack the rack and a swift zeitgeist speaking of which we just gave a whole dovetail collection away on Patreon, congratulations, Molly Gardner. Next giveaway on our Patreon is going to be a Jack the Bike Rack. So not a lot of wheel flop going uphill, which I think is a good thing because this makes this bike more of an all-rounder rather than a downhill dedicated uh, bike. Speaking of downhill, let's take it down the trail. One thing I'm noticing is how dang quiet these fell wood hubs are. <laughs> I mean, all I'm hearing is the wind, the dirt. It's actually nice to have a quiet hub. Doesn't sound expensive, but man, you hear the natures. Oh, a little tight. Okay, these bars are, are wide. Chunk. These Renee Earth tires are doing pretty good on the single track. I mean, granted, it's really tacky and perfect right now, but Good grip. Also didn't feel like a, a pig on the paved part. I gotta say, this bike was a lot more fun than I thought it would uh, be on the single track. You definitely feel the stability. It's just not as twitchy, i say a cross-inspired gravel bike. I think if I were to take it on more chonkier terrain, I'd probably consider moving up to 29 inch. But 650B with these Renee Earth tires makes for a good kind of all-rounder setup where you might be doing 50 to 70 percent of pavement some trail all right let's take it home Ooh. man <clears throat> lots of control of these handlebars just finished up from the ride again very short ride just to feel the bike out test it make sure it fits okay what are my thoughts of the bike so far i think it's a really different bike from what you see out there in the market most gravel bikes still try to emulate road and cross racing bikes tuck short chain stays this definitely goes in the opposite direction going longer in the rear Lots of advantages to this, adds a ton of stability. Going down the single track, although this didn't have a super slack front end, still felt really stable and confident. The front end, even though it was slightly on that higher trail side, it didn't feel too floopy floppy. I think that would change uh, if you went 29er, there'd probably be a little bit more of that high trailness to it. For me, this feels like a neutral but high uh, front end handling. So a good all-rounder, not super sloppy on pavement, but has that added stability when things get chonky. Love the purple. I mean, the Paul, the, the Paul components are a sight to behold. Love the stopping power of the clampers. It's, interestingly, is uh, the bike has post mount, so you can use the post mount Paul clampers, which means you can change the lever arms of them. So, so if you were to put drop bars on this, you could change the, the lever arms so they would work with road brifters. I don't think you can change the, the lever arms on the flat mount Pauls. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Really digging 
the Philwood hub. This is the absolute quietest hub I've ever tried. And, and it was such a trip to be going down the single track and all you hear is the, the crunchiness of the dirt and the wind and, and all of the natures without the sound of being chased by angry bees. And I had no idea that these Philwood hubs, at least in particular, were silent, but dang, that's, that's such a cool experience. In terms of the handlebars, I've really grown to like the Coyote, Coyote handlebars by Ritchie. Because they have that front bend before sweeping back, you don't need to run an extra long stem to put your hands above the steering uh, access of the bike. So, so I'm hoping that when I do a drop bar conversion that I don't have to buy a different stem. I can just use the same stem. I think a lot of people are confused by this bike. You know, it looks like a mountain bike, but its geometry when compared to a modern mountain bike, completely different. Numbers wise, it's probably closer to a touring bike, but it doesn't have that overbuilt tubing. I rode the long haul trucker for years. Loved it, but unloaded. The bike felt so stiff and had no life to it. What's really cool about this bike is it gives you the handling characteristics of a touring bike without the weight, a little bit more lively, super smooth. Again, I think that's what the most recent crop of Ritchie bikes are all about. They're, they're taking elements from different disciplines and kind of mashing it up to create something fun and exciting. Looking at their last Outback, you know, they went long when people went short. They stayed with the non-tapered head tube to get that compliance instead of having something super chonky like other brands do. And I think they're doing something similar with this. The Ascent was one of the bikes that I most wanted to test out on the channel this year. Came in at the 11th hour, so unfortunately, I'm not gonna include it in our most supple bike of the year award. Yes, the laurels are coming, but I'm super stoked it's here. I'm gonna be taking it down south with us to California and Arizona, running it with the alt bars as well as drop bars, really putting it through its paces. After riding it today and kind of looking at its numbers for quite a while, I, I do think it's a really interesting and special bike. So I hope you guys are having an awesome holiday season. Uh, just a quick note, we still have a bunch of stem caps and prints and postcards. So if you enjoy the content on the channel, if you find it entertaining or useful, I really try to strive for useful and educational where I can. Consider supporting the channel by buying something from the shop or joining us on Patreon. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, we're gonna have a little contest and give away a Jack the Rack bike rack. Until next time, keep the supple side down.